Hello, everybody. I feel like I've done this a lot. Yeah, it's it's nice. Um, all right, today we have one match. It's going to be inside the Progetto 54. But before we start with that, I have a serious question. What? Who in the right mind said this was okay? Now, re remember this. I understand that this is an open top tank. All right, this was the first time. This is my first encounter with flamethrowers. All right. There's something wrong with flamethrowers. Start of the timer. It is currently 47. Okay, 47 seconds in. We're going to go one second. Not even a full second yet. Two crew members are dead. Within a full second, my entire crew is dead. My entire crew is dead. This makes no sense to me. I'm sorry. I mentioned like I was. I wanted to change things and not be so negative, but this, this is broken. All right. The fact is... I only have five crew members. Are like I understand that Halloween was last month, but the last time I checked, I don't want burning people operating my tank. All right, I expect I understand that. Sure, our med kits are on a, a one minute cooldown and everything else, but Jesus, why? Why is this a thing? Why is it that within the course of a second, I lose my entire crew? I'm ammo racked. I have no view range now. Um. I'm just wondering, are flamethrowers banned from comp? Because from what I just experienced, they're probably banned for very, very specific reasons. And this might be one of them. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the replay. Uh, we're going to be talking about movement and map positioning and god-awful cluster <laughs> situations. All right, now, I'm playing with Blade and General Jim Bob inside this lineup, but I gotta say, thank you, General, for buying me the Mantis. I gotta say, I'm enjoying the tank. 201 standard pin, 280 premium pin. I'm probably gonna put a, couple, a, li a little bit more time into that tank tomorrow and try and get a review of the tank out as quick as I can, but I want to make sure that it's legitimate. I might not actually do... I might just do some gameplay on it and talk about how I feel about the tank. Um... Because I've been gone for such a long time, it's really hard for me to know what the meta is currently. Anyways, Pilsen. I love this map. Uh, it's actually, out of all the maps in the game, I feel like Pilsen is very well designed. With, a, like, just in a lot of ways. Um, there's some cheesy positions you can get to. I was in the building, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. That's buggy. But, you know, jump, jumping back in. Uh, that position right there... Alright, can I can I pause here now? Alright, he hello, can anyone. Um, unlock? <laughs> no, I can't. Alright, but you can park here, aim through the windows, and you can hit the tanks across the way. Um, I like to get there inside early inside matches just because it's really viable to get up inside there. Actually, I think uh, I had a match in stream that I'll, that I'll be able to show that off. Maybe. But I'll, I'll look through it, and if I find it, then I'll attach it. Um, put two shots in the K91, uh, version two. Yeah, K91, uh, dash two. Oh, God, KV4, and then, uh, a mill. Lucky for me, the mill wasn't even looking at me. I think the mill was angry at, uh, the KV4 that I set on fire. But I'm down to 605 hit points. Uh, so far, he's on... Alright, the K91 is on fire. Uh, 59 Patton, a KV4, and then a mill. Oh, God. IS-3 auto, and then IS-3, uh, Udez, Strum Tiger, yeah, we are clearly outnumbered right here. And then coming back to my tank, it, like, everything is spotted around us. Proxy spots, everything going on, IS-3, lucky for me he missed, and I'm loading up, there's General, General's talking about coming out real quick, and I tell him, you know, if you, if you got a clip, you know, don't risk it, and... What what happens? Well, there there's risk, and then there's a uh, general. <laughs> He's all like, "Oh, wow, okay." Uh, let let me. He, he, <laughs> this is a scenario where general's like, "Hold my beer," and he's got a good position right here. It's a really decent crossfire. We got blade in the inside. General's pulling out a little bit too far now, and then you have me. I'm sitting here, and the moment general goes down, the only thing going through my head is, "It is time to leave," because in a situation like this. I mean, looking around the map, just, I mean, here, you, you can already see one, two, 
three, four, four tanks, five tanks, because we know that the KB4 is still in the background. But what do you do in a situation like this? Because for me, I look straight at Blade and I say, See ya! I'm out of here. You're slow, but I'm fast. You're probably going to die, and I don't know if I'm going to make it out of here either. But we're going to try. And try is actually uh, what I was getting into, because here we go. We got the ice 3 auto. I'm pulling across. I'm freaking out. I put one more shot in, 321, into the KV-4. And now my goal is simply, I already know that they're going to mop up this entire side. There's way too much armor. There's a UDS-3 over here. IS-3. IS-3 auto. There's a KV-4. And I already know that this is a lost cause on this side of the map. So I was like, I got some decent mobility. I'm going to use this mobility to get out of here as fast as I can. And remember, even if you're a one shot in this game, you still have a gun. You're still capable of dealing damage as long as you're capable of using... Actually, hold on. The amount of HP that's been introduced in the game and the fact that the Earthshaker is on a challenge means more and more Hesh. So I guess being this low of health... Depending on the uh, match, uh, you're just going to get HE to death. Uh, but other than that, and other than flamethrowers, uh, I'm happy I didn't know about their existence inside this match. Uh, but now I know about their existence, and now I know that they're absolutely ridiculous. Popping the premium consumable to get a little bit more view range out, because I don't know what's going to be around us. I'm wondering if maybe the heavy tanks are going to be driving up top here, which they do. And from this point of view, it was actually me that spotted these guys out. Because I did go through this replay, and if you look... He is nowhere able to see them. And then we come over here to our medium, the MBK-46. He, he's nowhere near these guys, which means me popping my premium consumable and enhancing my view range by an additional 15% or 10%, however much it is in the premium consumable, taking it from, let's say, like 454 to like 490, means the moment these guys entered my view range at 445, that I spotted them out immediately, which gave everyone on this side of the map a bit more time to react and enough time for this M M46KR to absolutely panic. Because that's what it is. Uh, the moment that you see this many tanks up, and then second I get spotted, it's like, oh, time to back up, but aim. Now, the Progetto 54, it is a three-shot autoloader, and in my opinion, a really nasty tier 8 heavy tank. If anything, it's a heavy tank that I would actually consider more of a medium for its mobility, but it has heavy tank armor. And then you have a heavy tank gun. So you have the mobility of a medium. Maybe not the fastest medium, but kind of a heavier medium. So a heavium, essentially, is the best way to look at this. And we're going to be moving around the left side, because right now it's all about positioning and what we can do. And so far, this entire match, yes, I do believe this entire match was a full premium loadout. But after this match, I did drop a majority of my premium shells inside this, because I was... Uh, not happy about losing a hundred thousand silver a match, so I dropped half of them and went back to standards. But even if I was firing off standards, um, it still would have been completely fine. But due to the reloads on this, I kind of feel like it's either you load a full set of one or you don't. In my opinion, if you if you have the economy to handle it, then try your best to handle it. That's all. Like my recommendation. If you have the money to afford it, do it. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's a horrible way to look at it. Please don't do that. Uh, all, it's always about trying to make money, but if you're grinding out tech trees or you're trying to three mark something, um, I personally, I enjoy three marking tanks with um, a balanced loadout more than I do with a full focus premium loadout. You know, for instance, like I have three high explosives on this, which they do, they do come in handy. You know, some people are, they're always talking about that, you know, a, a non-essential balanced loadout. There's no point in having any high explosives because you barely ever get the chance to use them. Well, you're going to see in this game that the high explosives do come in clutch a little bit. Strum Tiger P is positioning himself over on the train tracks. Now we're getting rushed by three medium tanks. It's me and a T-69. Nice. And my goal is to pull out. I need to try and deal some damage because I don't want them to come at us with full health. And there's artillery for... 253, I think that was. And I'm down to 27 hit points. I was a one-shot prior, but now I am definitely a ram. A, a slight love tap. And it is now almost game over for me. But the T-69, he is putting in some work. Right there, taking down the FV. T-25 pilots can be coming in. Um, paintless guy, 
he was actually talking in game chat. He's all like, oh, kill him. <laughs> I weakened him for you. You can do it. And this was the moment that panic started to kick in because it's, it's now a one versus three. And I'm on 27 hit points. So by this time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to come to a stop. We're going to see what happens. And lucky for me, the T-25 pilot did not take the time out to aim. If he would have just simply stopped and waited, rather than playing extremely aggressive, um, he could have waited for artillery to hammer me down and force me to come over to Cliff or do something else instead of giving me the advantage and him parking in a position that it's real easy to approach on. Uh, T-25 pilot could have played that a lot better. But unfortunately, he was a bit blinded by the kill or the last kill of the game thinking that they had the match made. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you did not. Now, I'm driving slow, because I enjoy to hold my thumbstick ever so slightly, just so I have a bit more control and my gun's ready to fire, because I had no idea where the Strum Tiger P was going to be located on 198 hit points. And right here, I'm thinking about it. I... I was thinking about how I would think about things in the old way. Um, a lot of people would think that, you know, if I'm over here, I don't know where, where you're going to come from, but the most likely place that you're going to try and come from would be to drive over here and then somehow miraculously end up on top of the building because there's apparently no collision physics underneath the map so you're going to be turning around right here just like he's doing right now he's going to he thinks i'm going to be coming through the rear and you'll notice that i i, I thought about it right here i looked left but then i'm like you know what? i'm going to go right because i the, the last thing that you want to do is go in front of a big gun <laughs> there it is <laughs> blade started laughing general started laughing and i sat there and i'm all like yeah that's kind of the way i thought about it <laughs> and right here i'm not even paying attention i'm actually looking away and started to drive off turrets locked i'm just driving as you can tell i'm not really driving um, with any court like coordination i heard the audio of the shot but i had no idea and then nacho man marks the map giving me an idea where he is and as I'm going, I'm like, you know what, I need to reload. So I started my reload, and I started to pop in the high explosive rounds. Artillery has a lot of hit points. Or 1,000 HP. I'm not guaranteed to kill 1,000 HP, and here we go. Yeah, 723, I'm going to blind fire one. So uh, technically just trying to perform a snapshot with a single HE shell. I'm going to come to a stop. Oh, crap, 179. And then I fired off my last one but I did not hear it impact. You can hear slight impacts in the distance if you're listening, but I didn't hear an impact. So I was wondering to myself, did it hit? Did it just continue onward to oblivion? Not, no idea where it's going. And he gets spotted on 79 hit points. And I'm like, nice. Those HEs just made, made this a thousand times easier. So I don't have to shoot him three times. Um, I don't have to shoot him twice with standard rounds or anything else. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to go, I'm just going to wait. This guy should know. I'm an autoloader. And every once in a while, one of the most simplest things that you can do inside of an autoloader is one bait shot. Hey, how you doing? Then he comes out because he thinks I'm reloading. Uh, but in fact, I'm fully loaded. And you were not ready for that. So that match ended up with 6,264 damage, 22 direct hits, 490 blocked, a mastery badge, ace tanker. Uh, first mark of excellence was already in the tank prior, but I can't remember what the um, standing got up to uh, during this match. But this was just intended to show off mobility. And sometimes, even if you're on low health, that you can still make a difference inside of a lineup. And currently... And currently, you know, you, you get into a scenario where you think you're going to lose, but in fact, you're not. Because you had an idea, you had a little bit of HP, and you didn't give up. In all honesty, I, I was a bit stunned how this match went, because I wasn't paying attention to my damage or anything else. I was simply in a panic attack halfway through the match, because we got rushed tonight. It was all like, <laughs> Blade, <laughs> bye! <laughs> it's nice knowing you for the very short amount of time I have. <laughs> <laughs> he died horribly. Um, but yeah, that and flamethrowers. Flamethrowers suck. Uh, uh, but you see, I can't say that because then I'm going to use it. I'm going to do it to somebody else. I'm going to be sitting there like, oh man, this is awesome. 
So me saying that they suck currently uh, is truth. I understand that Wargaming needed to change, that they do more damage to open top tanks, but um, whenever my crew dies in exactly one second, the entire crew, uh, my, my crew was somehow miraculously a ghost crew because no one was alive inside of it. They were all damaged. They were all dead. They were burning alive, and they were simply happy enough just to put one shell in extremely slowly, taking 31 seconds to do so. I uh, guess they'll be fine. It's just a... It's, it's tis just a flesh wound. Ow. Poor guys. Anyways, guys, have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is that you're catching this. And just remember, flamethrowers hurt a lot. And the Progetto 54 is still one of my favorite tier 8s inside this game. And 6,000 damage is absolutely outrageous for any tank in the game. Um, speaking of which, what's my loadout? Oh, it's still full premium. I guess I lied. Oh, hold on. I was talking about the TNH 105. That someone wanted me to play that, so I did standard ammunition loadouts. Um, I'm I'm live on Twitch a little bit more. I was live all day today. I'm going to be live every single day. Um, so if you want to, uh, just look me up on Twitch. I do believe it's linked to my YouTube. I don't know what else to say except for yeah that match was pretty cool that happened at the start of the day till next time catch you guys later